Hi guys, I'm so happy that it's actually full house again because I was kind of thought that, you know, people would go home because it's Saturday. Uh, so, my name is Agnes and my partner, meaning not my private life partner, but a graphic designer mother couldn't be here, so I'm here uh, for both of us. We are both girls. Uh, yeah, that's the detail I could add to the story today. And I just wanted to kick it off with this picture because, uh, you know, it's Saturday and that's actually what I would like to do today because, you know, it's Saturday. -ing. And uh, this is actually a picture from the third volume of uh, our uh, magazine, or we call it Bookazine. And it's not actually me on the picture there, but uh, that story is there and it's about uh, staying, bed, staying in bed for all day. But uh, with this, as you know, Kitty's cell, uh, let's go to the business. Um, so our book is in, it's called Benji Newman. That's a name for a, a, a man in his 30s, uh, last part of his 30s, and uh, he is on his way on his own perfect day, and that's why he's traveling uh, around the world, and on his way to this perfect day, he's meeting people, different kind of people, weird ones, old ones, young ones, uh, from all, all around the world, and the stories he, he hears ends up in the book in the printed format. And uh, we kind of have those two unofficial hashtags uh, that we always have on mind when we produce and work on the upcoming volume, and uh, that's how I'm kind of going to illustrate it, uh, what those hashtags stand for. So uh, our tagline, or the main idea uh, behind the title is uh, life that you can read. It's really cool that we are, I, I am talking after the MacGuffin, because I really see how it really goes together. Uh, we don't really talk that much about objects in our magazine, but uh, about people um, and their lives, how they how they spend them, and uh, often when back in Riga, when I, I, I take part in uh, little markets when I'm selling magazine myself, people come up to me and they are like, so what's your magazine about? And I'm, you know, life that you can read, and they are like, um, what does it mean? And I'm saying to you, to them, you know, that thing we both do, living, but they still don't understand it, and I'm saying that you maybe need to kind of flip through and understand what it's about. So let's do that together maybe today. Uh, but let's start with the visual, the, the what, right? The editorial design and how it looks like. So this is our first volume. It was published back in uh, October in 2014. And on the cover you can see, yeah, what do you think, what it, what it is? It's actually a, a beard. Um, yeah, you can actually see there's the jawline from, yeah, aside. And uh, when we when we launch on our uh, website, we put this um, pattern uh, on, the, on the screen there as a, as a background, and you could actually use your mouse and, and shave it off. And the editor of Gourmand uh, uh, told on the, on the stack on the Monocles radio program, he said, if only it could be as easy in the real life when you could shave with the, with the click of your mouse. Right. I don't know. I don't have that problem, so I, I wouldn't say. Um, this is our second volume where we went into more uh, about things you can do uh, with paper, and we introduced a dust cover, which can actually can be used as a, as a, a little poster. Uh, inside there, there is a quote from an interview with an astronomer, and the interview is there in the second issue, and yeah, and you could... Well, there is the open binding that many people loved. And uh, with the second issue, we understood that we are going to uh, stay with the open binding because it's really, it's really practical. It stays open when you read it, when you eat, when you drink, and uh, it just goes better. And it also kind of looks nice. Um, yeah, this is where you can see it, both sides of it. And um, this is the third issue, which is in the stores as now at the moment. And um, yeah, every, every time if we talk about the covers, uh, we never um, uh, ask anybody to make the cover. Uh, our design is, is content driven, so whenever a great picture or story comes up, and I and Madre, we can feel that it is the covers, cover story, the cover picture, we put it there. And so it's always kind of, a, in a way, random. But then again, that's how life goes, right? You don't really plan things, or if you do, you know something can go wrong, so you maybe go better with the flow. Um, let's look 
a bit inside. So our magazine, our book scene, it's bilingual, meaning it's in English and Latvian, and Latvia is where I come from. And we decided to leave the Latvian part there because, and sometimes there is a side of Russian, because Russian is also spoken back in Latvia, is that uh, me as a journalist, I believe that if you can read the original, in the original language, so the original language should be printed uh, there also. So that is a, a spread where you can see the column uh, written by Benji himself, who is our editor at large. And as you see, it's... And also, yeah, here you can see how it, uh, when you read the magazine, you can easily follow if you're an English reader or Latvian reader, because the English copy is always in, 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 in black and the uh, Latvian in bluish shade. Um, also, as we say, as it's the bookzine, because it's quite also chic and kind of a book, book sized, uh, we have uh, chapters in between the stories uh, that uh, works kind of a, because we like the flair of a book. And also, they kind of uh, put things together, like uh, theme-wise. And with the third volume, which is uh, this one, the chapter from the third volume, we understood that we can use that space not only for a practical reason, meaning separating the stories, uh, but also it's kind of, it works kind of a, a gallery space. Like in this, this case, we, have, we had this girl who just started, she kind of felt that she is actually, she likes to paint and that she's not professional and anything, she's really in the beginning of her past. And uh, so I asked her, you know, she didn't even make any special um, uh, pictures for, the, for Benji, she just, I just picked some out of her collection and, and added that to the, the chapter there. Uh, also open binding here for the third uh, volume, and then there's this, those pictures with the, with the tongues, are also by these girls that I just mentioned. And also, you can maybe see that, but it says there, oh, hi there, come on in. You know, as an introduction when you meet people and you are going to meet them by reading Benji. Uh, also, we really love to use different paper stock. This is a spread from our first volume uh, where we had a naked girl with nice boobies, and we wanted to... Um, to, 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 put, to, to make that feeling that you are kind of flipping through an old photo album, where in olden times they were putting those in between transparent papers, and so this was kind of a, uh, working as a, as, a, as a veil to cover girl, to cover the girl for a moment. And then in the third volume we introduced another new uh, paper, kind of paper, because we always work with the uh, glossy and unglossy paper, but for this one, especially for only this one story, uh, we used a really cheap, kind of a toilet paper-ish paper, uh, cheap one looking, yeah, not looking good at all. But why we did that is that this story is about a historical event back in uh, 1989 in, in Riga, in Latvia, in Baltics actually, where there was this uh, historical event taking place called the Baltic Way. That's actually kind of an historical event that many people in the world kind of learned about, that there are actually Baltic countries, and it's not all Russia there or Soviet Union. And so this story is about that day and how it happened and, how, and where exactly it took place um, across Riga. And the paper there, right? So it's um, early 90s, and after Latvia got independent from Soviet Union, as you can imagine, that um, uh, all the uh, economy went down, and for some time, Back then, uh, the raw materials were non-existing, including paper. So there was actual, there's actual a newspaper from, from back there, which printed a, a note to the readers that because we don't have paper anymore, we are going to print only two issues for now. And that's why we decided uh, that, that, that we are going to print this story on a really cheap paper to underline that feeling back in the 90s in Latvia, and I guess not only in Latvia. So, um, this is all about the editorial design, which is really nice. I hope you think so too. Uh, different methods and different takes on it. But the thing is that, be well, be behind that design should be something else, because otherwise it's just nice paper, printed paper, like anybody of you could do the same. So this is why I say, yeah, but why? I mean, why do you do what you do? And uh, we have, oh, no, sorry for that, but you can, Let's say that it's for some style there. Uh, uh, so we have uh, two goals behind our 
our thing we do. They're actually really simple ones. So number one is create a space where everyone can simply be, meaning that nobody is printing advices on how to uh, be a perfect husband or wife, how to earn more, uh, what, what makeup to use, what to wear, etc. Nobody is giving you those advices that you actually don't really need, right? And that you actually feel worse after reading than before that. So this is a space where everybody can be who you are. As long as you have story to tell and you are not spreading hate, you are welcome to come and, and tell your story. And the second goal is to tell the Latvian story in international language. With international, I don't mean English, because English is technicality in this case. It's a, more about the human language, because all of us want to be loved. We love somebody. We want them to love us. We fear of something. We hope something. We feel that we are not maybe in the wrong, we are not in the right country or city or maybe even family. So um, all those things unite us, and that is what Benji really is all about. And I will just tell you a little sum of those behind stories. So this is Jazeb, or Joseph. He is um, in his 80s. And this place here, um, it wasn't curated any, anyhow. That is how, when I, when I went to, uh, to see him in an old people's house back in Latvia, those chairs were actually there. I don't know why. So this is another kind of a proof that life just happens. You just have to. You just have to be able to, to catch the moment. Right, so how I met Joseph, uh, it was through his granddaughter, who was uh, using his picture, not this one, uh, for the, her upcoming um, uh, handmade honey brand. And on that picture, which is actually printed in the volume one, uh, this guy is seen in, his, uh, in a hat, in a black and white picture, and he's smiling. And it looks like that he is this Italian man from a, from a stocks, stocks, uh, take a picture taken from stocks. And so I asked to this girl, so who, who is this guy? And she said, that's my granddad. And I'm telling her, it can't be because Latvian, because all Latvian people are not this happy in, uh, as it was in that picture. But she says, no, no, this is my grandfather. And she goes on telling more about him. And as a journalist myself, so I always look for, for, the, for the story. And I understood that I, I need to meet him. So I went there in early September, as you see here in the picture. And in Benji, we do that, that at first we kind of have this idea because why we want to talk to person, but then we le let him or her just talk what he or she wants to. And Joseph here decided that he felt so. He wanted to talk about his girlfriends, current ones, his age of 80. Um, he talked about them. Some of them were actually calling him to, uh, during the conversation here. And he was, of course, taking the call and everything. And uh, the conversation lasted for an hour or so, and I, I actually made him cry twice, not because I wanted to, but as you know, when you meet somebody, you never know, especially at this age, that you would ask something and it just makes you really tearful. And so all the conversation ended up about sex at his age, about uh, relationships, about... Uh, uh, his past and actual girlfriends, and uh, him going, taking a bus and going to meet them across Latvia and so on. And it seems that it's a really funny story, right? There is this old man talking about sex, right? Like this old granddad. But the thing is that the very last thing he said, he says that in two days he's going to meet this other girl of his age, right? And he says, I am afraid that I'm, she might not like me. Because I have his really nice voice, and it's true, his voice is like incredible. But when they meet me sometimes, they see that I am this old man, and maybe older than they thought that I would be, and I'm, and I'm afraid of that. And it's also just another kind of a proof that when life goes on, it doesn't matter how old you are, you always have these fears that maybe people won't like you for this or another reason. So, this is Gunars, he's a photographer, he's a really legendary one. Back in Soviet times, he was the most known name out of Latvia, uh, especially for these kind of uh, photographies. Uh, this is not Photoshop. Well, of course, you can see that it's not taken today. Uh, he didn't disclose me how he did that. Well, professional uh, secret. But yes, for those levitating girls and, and couples, that's what he's famous for. So, and at Benji, we do so that we kind of never ask journalists to make the interview. We ask people that would be interested 
uh, talking to those persons that we would like to be interviewed. So I asked this girl who is a TV presenter back in Latvia, uh, but who is a really avid photographer herself. And uh, so after a while, and I know that the conversation should be done already, and I'm in Sweden, and I get, it's middle of the day, and I get a telephone call. And I pick it up, I, heard, I see that it's her, and I hear that she's tipsy. And it's two in, two, two in an afternoon. And she says, so I made the interview happen. I, and I say, I can hear that. She says, you know, of course, we took some glass and everything as you do when you, when you chat and everything. I say, great, so how, what about the pictures? Because the idea was that she's going to well, she's going to photograph him. And she says, you know what? He says, uh, he can do that, but the first place I should, well, the girl, should pose, should sit for him. And I'm saying, that's going to be legendary, right? This is this man, right, with all his uh, fame and everything. And she says, but you know that he's actually into, into nudes, right? I didn't put the picture here. But I mean, he's really into naked girls uh, flying like this or just everything. And I'm so, what's the problem? And she says, you know, and then one day I go in an exhibition and I see myself full frontal, right? <laughs> I'm like, so what's wrong about that? So I don't know how that story or that deal uh, went, but this is the picture we got. <laughs> right. Himself uh, getting into a skin of his models, right? But the thing is that the story, the interview is really great one because there is all this life story behind it, but the ending of it is actually quite sad. I'm kind of, uh, yeah, teaser trailing you here, but um, it's quite sad because maybe you can imagine or you, can, you have heard that from your grandparents or something, is that people at this age, they have so much behind them, and so that there is not only the happy thing, but only many regrets. And that's what he's talking in the conversation. Okay, and then there is this kind of uh, the, the final uh, story, behind the scenes story here. This is a piece from the third volume here, and it's, uh, made those paintings are by this great painter, Ausiklis Bauschenegs, who is not, not, not alive anymore. But uh, he, was, uh, he was working back in Soviet times. And as you maybe can pick it from here, that he is actually into surreal things. And uh, so the Soviets couldn't really make anything about him because he was putting all these messages in between the lines, but they still thought that there's something wrong with the pictures when they were right. And so for some time he was actually forbidden and his name couldn't be mentioned in the press. And for some year or so he was uh, not allowed to exhibit. So when I, when I knew about this uh, painter, but in making Benji, I kind of felt that this is a great story of how to tell the Latvian story in international language, meaning uh, the pictures are really nice and they are not that difficult to understand. But the thing is that each of them tell a story that you can understand only if you know the context of his historical and practical context. So what we did, we organized, or as you can see, it's actually an exhibition within the magazine. There's this lady from the museum sitting and watching you, right? Um, but uh, we introduced, introduced uh, five, uh, like five persons uh, who are... Um, telling those stories behind those uh, paintings. So the whole idea is that imagine you are going to a, an exhibition that you uh, are really uh, looking forward to, to understand, but you don't because, you know, the meaning is kind of hidden in between. So here comes towards you uh, a guy, because all of them turn out to be guys, and he says, so you see there is this thing in this picture, right? So this is what you see, and you're like, yeah, and this is what I see. And he says, and, but you know what? There was this thing, why is this and that is pictured in the picture. And in the end, uh, looking at the pictures here and reading the, their stories, their personal stories, you get this 3D kind of a feeling and this wide angle of uh, looking at a country in this case. But as those stories is, are about practical life back then, you can imagine and you can compare to your own because, you know, we are all from different parts of the world and history has turned out differently this or that time for all of us. So, um, just almost, I don't know, how much time do I still have? I feel like I'm here five minutes, great. Um, so, uh, this thing we, we kind of introduced just by happening is uh, brand extensions, as I say here. They happen by itself when you just know your why. And we just started to, to teach Latvian language 
on, in our social uh, media, Instagram and Facebook. And we use this kind of a known uh, graphic way of doing that. But the thing is uh, that all those pictures traveling there and floating on the internet, they don't have Latvian words there yet. So we kind of introduced to that. Uh, but telling, um, like, uh, yeah, some things that you kind of relate to. Uh, somehow there are so many words with S, starting with S, or like this one. The thing is, people like them, they share them. That wasn't the plan. We just kind of like the idea that, that we can tell the Latvian, t tell, uh, no, teach the Latvian language this way. And we don't have really actual plans what to do with them, although one follower said that we should make postcards and sell them. Let's see how that unravels. Um, so this is Hermanis. Uh, he's, he, he's a Latvian, and back in the 40s, uh, back in Riga, he used to have a stationery store. In 1942, when the Soviets were approaching uh, Riga, uh, he was notified by, uh, by his neighbor that uh, the private business will be taken away or, 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 or else you will be sent to Siberia, how it actually happened. So he was a smart guy, and he thought that he's going to give the business to the Soviets, but before that he will uh, take all the um, stuff, all the goods from his store and hide it away and hide it away. And so he did that. Uh, the most part of it ended up in the basement of that building. And less than part of that uh, was taken uh, to another nearby city, to his summer cabin. So he, so he gave away his business. And for some time, his family was using all the goods that were, remained unsold. And then in uh, 1995, his grand, grand grandson turned 18 and decided he wants to go uh, to live separate from the family. And he chose to go to this summer cabin. And so he was refurbishing it, uh, taking out a wall or something. He just sees that there is one of the outer walls is, uh, is thicker than the others. And so he starts to dig it there. And see, so he sees that his grand granddad has uh, put many of the stationaries back from the 40s in the wall, right? And he used, uh, and, he's, and this guy, he wrote me a message on Facebook, and he was a former colleague of mine. He says, don't you maybe know those artist people or something who would like to use, who would like to have and buy 70-year-old paper goods looking like this? And I'm like, no, wait, what? there? Tell me the, ro the wall story. And so we decided I actually uh, get some part of his, um, of his goods, and we introduced Benji Box. It's like those things that you can order online where you get like some secret great stuff inside, or sometimes you just order uh, plain white socks because you don't have time to go to the supermarket. So, but we wanted to kind of uh, uh, go on with telling the Latvian story in international language, and this time actually bringing and, and giving an opportunity to, to get a chunk out of our place and our history and you know all those those things are actually over 70 years old and and they were hiding or, 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 or there in the wall and you can actually still use them and well, they have all this vintage nice flair. Okay then the final thing here the sneak peek uh, a small one in the upcoming issue number four uh, due to April end of April. Um, so I didn't mention it before but thing is that uh, we don't really go on themed uh, issues, but sometimes the theme just pops up by itself. And that's ex exactly how it happened with this issue, which, which is still in the production. So I got uh, an email from a possible contributor, a writer, um, and he had added his uh, piece already with the email. He is Iranian, uh, he's 27 years old, but he lives in Canada, Toronto, with his family. There, his family moved uh, soon after the Iranian Revolution. and. Um, his story is about um, how he is going to back to Tehran for one of those times and wondering which exactly is his home. Is it Canada? Is it Iran? And um, telling his, his story, he's going back and forth in his own history and his own like personal history in the history of his country. <coughs> and then he, sorry, and he ends up with this understanding and while he has kind of a Two, two homes, he has none, because he's kind of a pending in between, because none of these places, he's actually um, one, of, one of theirs. And um, after this story, I start to receive other um, stories from other contributors, and I just see that this theme is in the air, uh, because all of them are kind of dealing with the same subject, either in physical or emotional level, but it's still there. 
And that's how this theme called displacement uh, kind of just came up by itself. And um, with this on mind, I go to Madara, my graphic design partner, and I say to her, you know what, so we have the theme. Um, what do you think, what, how could we uh, translate that uh, in tactile and visual manner in the design? And she comes up with this great idea, which is a really simple one, and it's going to kind of mess up the cover a little bit. But um, I'm not going to disclose it to you, because it's going to be continuing on April 28th. And um, so this is actually all I wanted to tell to you. Thank you very much for your attention. And I hope that, you know, maybe we see you around, around volume four or five, or who knows how many there will be made. Thank you very much. <laughs> Brilliant, love it. Um, so the, I, I'm really interested to know, so we're, here we are, the international audience, seeing you telling this story of Latvia to an international audience. How is it received at home? How would I perceive home? No, no, how, sorry, how, how, what do people at home in oh, Latvia think home. of the magazine? The thing is that in Latvia, but I heard it's not only so in Latvia, that people uh, pick it up slow, slow, more slowly than abroad. I don't know why, uh, but uh, I guess that's something with uh, human psychology, that the locals or your own needs that your thing is appreciated abroad. And then they're like, oh, how did you? Oh, OK, OK, now I'm interested. Yeah, I guess that's something with their minds, our minds, I guess. So you're thinking like issue five, issue six, you're going to be like the queen of Latvia. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that is the name, queen of Latvia. <laughs> awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you.